شما بیان شد یه وقت که همه الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل من اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ربنا تقبل منا إنا كانت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنا كانت تباما رحيم So my brothers as we're continuing on with the introduction inshallah with patience so there's just few more things that we need to discuss about introduction inshallah today we'll finish with the aspect of wahi and we'll go on with Quran we'll start with Quran there's a few things that we need to discuss about the Qur'an. For example, we need to discuss that in some verses of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says one thing, and the other says another thing which it contradicts. So why is this? A person can raise and ask you a question that, subhanAllah, Ajib, our scholars have answered everything. It's such a thing about our deen. They haven't left a speck of speculation for anybody to point fingers at our deen. That for example, how can you say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you say in one aspect, you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. In another aspect, you're saying that one verse, it came first, and then the second one overtook it, the commandment. How does that make sense? So, alhamdulillah, they, they have answered everything for us. So, inshallah, we'll go into the de depths of just a few questions here and there that common people like us, somebody might ask them, just for our information, we might know something away from the tafsir of the Qur'an, but something to do with the Qur'an. And we'll also talk about the preservation of the Qur'an. How from the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi was it preserved? And then we'll also speak about the Qur'an, how it was revealed. We only know of the Qur'an being revealed over 23 years, the span. That is not the case. The case, yes, one aspect in this world, it was revealed over time and period. But there was another aspect in the heavens, it was revealed all at once. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew everything. So we'll go into a little bit more details to clear that a little bit. So inshallah, just to recap what we were speaking about, we spoke about that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created many blessings. Many of his creations that manifest all around us that we understand there is a creator almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first thing the insan has to understand that there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we know? Through his creations. And then if we categorize these two creations, we categorize them in two groups. We said, number one, known as Ashraf al-Makhluqat, the best of his creation, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them liable for their actions. Allah gave them the great honor and the great title of being the best of the creation. But at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you please me, then you'll get paradise. But if you do evil and wrong and vices, then you'll get hellfire. So that is the one creation in that we gave the humankind and the jinn kind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about. In Surah Nas, he says, jinnati wa nas. So we know the creation, there's another creation. And if we have heard the stories, you know, of Ilaj, Jabulta. So from that, we also we know there is something that is another creation that exists with us. I don't want to get into the details. Then, the other, what about the other creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created? We said... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all the other creations slowly for this mankind. So he can benefit from the other creation. And then we said, when man put his foot in this world, now he's seen the creation all around him. Then two things came to mind. How will he know how to use this? How will he recognize this creation? That this stick is a stick. This rock is a rock. Right? Wisdom. How will he know this intellectuality, this understanding? And then number two was, after understanding what this thing is and what the purpose of this thing, for example, a rock, understanding what a rock does. The second aspect it required the man to understand that in what manner will I use this creation to please my Allah? And in what, man, in what manner do I use this creation by which I will displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And for this, the human, ma human the creation needed knowledge and then we spoke about the three forms of knowledge that was the five senses and then we spoke about the limits of the five senses what the eye can perceive the nose cannot perceive what the nose can perceive the ears cannot perceive and when the limit it ends the eye has a limit of seeing 
And the nose has a limit of smelling. Where these five senses, now we understood from these five senses that thing is a thing, that uh, a stick is a stick. But then to understand the purpose behind the stick of this creation, we needed aqal. We needed our brain. Now, even the brain has limits. People say, no, no, you know, science has all the answers. Science has all the answers. But the beginning of science cannot explain the beginning of the theory of the Big Bang. It says things just came together, you know, and there was a big bang, and that's how the world came into existence. What about before that? Well, what does religion say? When your mind goes, subhanAllah, look at religion now. Understanding of man, it tries to have answers for everything, <coughs> logical possible. But we know that the eyes are deceiving. How is the eye deceiving? When you see on a hot summer day, in a far distance when you're driving, it looks like water. When you get close, there's no water. So the eyes are deceiving. Sometimes when you're in an old house, in, you know, out in the woods, you're hearing sounds when you're sleeping and you know, the kids are, uh, you know, we heard a ghost. You know? But it's all the, all the, because the house is old, whatever. So the ears are deceiving. The nose, everything is deceiving. But when it came to religion, when a person, Nabi Sallallahu says, when a person starts asking, okay, this is my father and mother. They have a father and mother. What about the first creation, Adam and Eve? Who created them? And Nabi Sallallahu says, your intellectuality doesn't go that far. And say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. And understand Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the creator of everything. Who created Allah? The mind cannot perceive this because he's the creator. See? Where religion draws the line. Unfortunately, today when we educate ourselves, when we educate ourselves, we think we can educate ourselves in everything. Everything, there's an answer. When we do wudu, there's no answer. Where we break our wudu from, we don't wash that part. It's under. Why? Because that has to do with religion. So when it came, so the five senses had a limit. The answer to the five senses was to use your brain. Then the brain itself had a limit. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals something that the intellectuality of a human mind, a mind cannot go through that, go to that level. What was that? Wahi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed wahi. And that's where we ended up last week. Now, as we're speaking about wahi, Allah ma kashmiri rahmatullah alayhi. We, as, as I'm going to speak, inshallah, I'll familiarize with our scholars. Subhanallah, you know, our scholars, for example, Morna um, Ashrafali Tanwi. If anybody's not heard the name now, you have heard the name. Subhanallah, I went to visit his place. You know, this is, this is something to inspire us, to understand what our deen is. When I went to visit where he, his town is not even on GPS. He is written in every single field. Tafsir, hadith, everything. Arabic language, the principles of deen, everything he has written. But his town is not even on the GPS. So how did this person become so famous? It's because when he was, he, I went to visit his place. If you, li, if you read his lifestyle, our scholars did not only have knowledge, uh, information, they had knowledge. What was that? Their life. The lifestyle was like the lifestyle of Nabi wasalam, and Nabi wasalam, and his sahabas. Day to day life. Because of the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today, we read about Mawana Ashfalitanu. You know? So Mawana Ashfalitanu, rahmatullah, he says, Wahi, revelation, is of three kinds. Number one, it's called Wahi Qalbi. Uh, generally, when we talk about revelation, we think Jibreel wasalam, came and he revealed it to Nabi Wasallam, and that's all the knowledge that we have. But there's more, much more. If we look into the pearls of Quran, the jewels of Quran, the treasure of Quran, when we open up the Quran and we get in depth, we will be amazed that our deen is so amazing. So number one, Wahi, he says, Wahi Qalbi. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He inspires and He puts it in the heart of a prophet, a command to do something. So there is no angel, He does not hear any voice, there's no middle person, there's no interlink. So this can either happen while the Anbiya are awake or while they're sleeping. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Baqra Eid is coming up, the whole story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he goes to his son, what does he say? إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ فَانْذُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى قَالَ يَا أَبَ تِفْعَلْ مَاذَا تُؤْمَرْ Then onwards, he goes to his son Ismail 
and he narrates the whole thing. What does he say? He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my dream. In my dream? So the, how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal the commandment of uh, Qurbani? He says to Ismail alayhi salatu wa salam, that in my dreams, I seen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded me, O oh my son, to uh, slaughter you. What do you think about this? Then the whole lengthy story. So through this we learned what? The first type of wahi. That is, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a dream or when he's awake, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires the Nabi. He commands the Nabi to do something. And this is called wahiya kalbi. Wahiya kalbi. Number two, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly speaks to the Prophet. There is no angel, but the Prophet, he hears the voice. Now, that's all we know. We cannot speak about what kind of voice. Because only the Prophet who heard the voice can describe it. And who had the honor? Who had the honor? Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran al-Kareem justifying to this, said, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا the Musa alayhi salatu was salam, how was it, the command revealed to him? Through direct discourse with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is Musa alayhi salatu was salam. And it says about Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa salam. Now, after I speak about these types of wahi, we will honestly understand the level of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa salam. The status of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa salam. That, that is the second one. What is the second one? He says in the Quran, Surah Taha. Thus he says, إِذَا رَأَى نَارًا فَقَالَ لِأَهْلِمْ كُثُوا إِنِّي أَنَسْتُ نَارًا فَقَالَ لِأَهْلِمْ كُثُوا إِنِّي أَنَسْتُ نَارًا Then he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّا أَنَا رَبُّكَ فَخْلَأْنَا عَلَيْكَ In Surah Taha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the story of Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's traveling with his wife in the desert. And they get lost. In a distance he sees a fire. And so he says to his wife, you wait here. I see a fire. When I'll go to that fire, it'll benefit me in two ways. What is that? Maybe I'll bring the fire. I'll bring the fire. And you know, in the desert, it was the a night. It gets cold. And if anybody's you've been to Saudi Arabia at night, it gets really cold. At day, it's really hot. And at night, it's really hot. And at night, it's really cold. So he says, I'll bring the fire. By fire, we'll warm ourselves. Or I see fire meaning that there must be some other people around there so I'll ask them for guidance because we're lost when he goes near then he sees that it's something divinely divinely and then that's where he speaks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Musa alayhi salatu wa salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicates with him so this is the second type of wahi number one was that the prophet is inspired in his heart number two is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly speaks to that prophet. And number three is called Wahiya Malaki. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends one of his angels down and he conveys this message to his prophet. Now there's three aspects of the angel. Sometimes this angel comes in the form of a human being. Sometimes this angel doesn't come in the form of a human being. But there's a voice that we hear, that the Prophet hears. Or uh, number three is that sometimes it doesn't come in the human form, but it comes in its original form, the angel. And the narrations in Bukhari, if you study Bukhari Sharif, and if you read through it, it says that the angel Jibra'il it came to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in its form three times three times and we'll speak about that so now all of these types of wahi so what is the basis you know somebody says yeah you're telling about wahi a kalbi wahi a malaki what is your proof Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this in the Quran Kareem Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا يُكَلِّمُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا وَمَا يُكَلِّمُ وَمَا كَانَ لِبَشَرٍ وَمَا كَانَ لِبَشَرٍ أَنْ يُكَلِّمَهُ اللَّهُ that it is not in the power of any Prophet to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except by means of three ways illa wahyin wahyin we said was inspiration aw mi warai hijab that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks behind the veil what does that tell us? 
that no person, even a prophet, does not have the honor to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So imagine, there's a hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, something to the effect more or less. It's a long hadith and a lengthy hadith where he speaks about a person entering Jannah. A person entering Jannah. And he gets the happiness of Jannah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks, he will speak to the people of paradise. And it is said about the things of paradise are so amazing. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have to understand, seen and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him paradise when he went on Mi'raj. And he's seen the torments of hellfire. There's a lengthy hadith about that too. But just keeping it short, then he says a person, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says about paradise, he says, paradise, jannat asi cheeza, ki koi aankh ne kabhi ne dekha. That the eyes has never seen. Koi kaan ne kabhi ne suna. It is something that are the things of paradise nobody has ever spoken about. So much so a person has never even imagined. Today people, they fantasize about different things that are impossible. So jannat is something that a person has never even thought about. So a person when he enters paradise, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, that the people of paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will communicate. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to us. The honor in itself. And then Allah will say to them, you know, they'll hear a voice speaking to them and they'll know it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the voice will be different. So, what will it say? It says, have you got everything more or less in the hadith? The conclusion is that have you got everything you wanted? So the people will say, Ya Allah, we have got more than what we expected. There are things here in this Jannah that we never thought about. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, there is still one thing that is greater than this. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will move this hijab. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show himself. And then the people, the Sahaba radiyan jama'een, imagine the Sahabas, when they used to see the Prophet sallallahu how happy they used to get. What did the Sahabi say? He says, oh, oh, you know, like a child when he, when he wants to get something, like a kilona, buy me this, dad, buy me this. So the Sahabi, the Anjumayn, are the happiness. What does he say? He says, O oh, Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He says, yes. So he says, how will we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There will be millions of people. And because he was thinking in the world when there's a crowd, everybody has to go over, tippy-toe to see if the president is speaking. But today, alhamdulillah, we have technologies, you know? So he's on the big screen, right? So he says, will we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It was the Sahabas who lived in the desert. So he points and he says, that the same way you see the full moon in the clear sky of this desert, that is how you'll see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this will be the honor that a mu'min gets, a person who lives a life in accordance to the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He'll see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. Today, we are only living a reality. What is that reality? That we have to die. And we perceive in the unseen. What is the Muslim belief? That there is Allah. On that day, that reality will unfold before him and they'll see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the second thing, the second wahi, is that the Nabi, no Nabi has communicated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. So it was behind a veil. And then it says, Oh, mi hijab, oh, oh yursila rasulan. أَوْ يُرْسِلَ رَسُولًا فَيُوحِيَ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّي Then he says in this Quranic verse that the third wahi is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends an angel and he communicates. So these are the three ways of wahi, three types of wahi. Number one was, again, to recap, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired it in the heart of Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, meaning Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And he saw in his dream, so Allah put it in his heart that he had to do slaughtering, qurban. Number two, was wahiya ilahi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ne bazaat khud baat ki behind hijab and number three is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel to speak now Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in what forms did the wahi come to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so in, for this Hada Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her race she says that Haris bin Hisham radiallahu ta'ala anhu Haris bin Hisham radiallahu ta'ala anhu who accepted Islam at the latter part of Islam when it was flourished and he lived a little bit while 
after he narrates, he asked Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, SubhanAllah, the Sahaba al Jama'een, they asked Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam everything. They did not leave a doubt in their mind. Now, to understand, we must understand one thing. That, remember the Sahaba al Jama'een, they were educated. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not educated. But that did not keep a barrier between Nabi Sallallahu and the Sahaba of the Ajma'in to learn deen. They didn't say that we are smarter, we're more educated. Today any person, what, is, what do they say? What is it? We're educated. He's not educated. Anything he's not educated. So we must understand when it comes to our deen and any question we have about our deen, that shouldn't be the barrier. We should ask as many questions. The Sahaba of the Ajma'in, they ask every single possible thing. Today, because of Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Imagine, she has narrated over 2,000 hadith. The major portion of the hadith of Aisha deal with what? Husband and wife, their relationship. If she did not re- relate the hadiths of Nabi Sallallahu a husband would not know how to communicate with the wife. So subhanAllah, we should always make dua. That's why after the Sahaba radiyan jama'een, we say, what do we say? Radiyallahu anhu, if it's a male. May Allah be pleased with them. Why? Because to, because of them, today we know everything in our deen. There's questions answered. If it's a female, we say radiyallahu anha. If it's two, then we say radiyallahu anhuma. If it's more than two, then we say radiyallahu anhum ajma'in. Okay? So she says, the Haris bin Hisham radiyallahu ta'ala says, I asked the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Nabi of Allah, how did you get wahi? So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Says, أَحْيَانًا يَأْتِ مِثْلُ سَلْسَلَةِ الْجَرَسِ That sometimes it came to me that I heard a voice. When Wahi came, I heard a voice. It was like the ringing of the bell. How was it? Wahi came to me, and I, if I give you, in comparison to something of this worldly thing, it was like the ringing of the bell. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi says that I heard the Wahi, and then I would memorize whatever was revealed to me. Right? But he says, وَهُوَ أَشَدُّ عَلَيَّ He says, but this kind of wahi was the hardest on me. What does that mean? That gives us another thing to say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Why? He says, وَهُوَ أَشَدُّ عَلَيَّ Even in the revelation of the Qur'an al-Kareem, Nabi Sallallahu says, I had hardships. Why? Did he have hardship? Because the thing revealed is not an ordinary thing. It's being revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the word of Allah. That's why the Nabi of Allah being the greatest human being, he's still saying, وَهُوَ أَشَدُّ عَلَيَّ Imagine the power of the Qur'an. That the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the mahbub of Allah, the most beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's saying that when the revelation came to me, I found it hard. And he says, this form of revelation was the hardest, meaning every single form of revelation was hard on me. Out of all the revelation, this was the hard on me. So we need to think, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he actually had the burden of revelation on him. Because it was something extraordinary. That's why Quran, as we spoke about the jinn kind, if when somebody is, has to go through the process and if, the, if they're overpowered by something, then the person, the alim, he reads what? Quran. The power of Qur'an, the power of Qur'an is such, to just to touch on the power of the Qur'an is such, when a person leads Qur'an, recites nice recitation of the Qur'an, people are just listening to the Qur'an, they don't even know the meaning and their eyes start tearing. Why? Is somebody holding a gun and saying, cry? No, the, because the power of the Qur'an is such, it's ununderstandable, that the person is reading and your eyes are tearing. Can anybody understand this? Can an intellectual person come and give me a logical reason behind this? So who makes you cry? The Quran makes me cry. That's why Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he used to recite Quran, the women of that time, the kuffar, they used to be mesmerized, they used to listen. So much so that the kuffar of Makkah were about to kill him, execute him. They said, if you want to recite Quran, do it in secrecy, don't recite in front of our because even they understood how powerful this Qur'an is. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, وَهُوَ أَشَدُّ عَلَيَّ so, so he heard the ringing of the bells. Number two, he says, وَأَحْيَانًا يَتَمَثَّلُ لِيَ الْمَلِكِ رَجُلًا That the angel used to come in the form of a person. 
Now the ringing of the bell, some scholars say <coughs> in the Urdu we will say Tarannu Tarannu and Tarassul Tarannu means the tone, the melody So some people say that the voice, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the voice that he heard, it was the voice of an angel and he said that is like the ringing of the bells Okay. Some scholars say no, no, no when the angels came, it was the flapping of the wings Parwana Par Parwana, what is it? Parhana What is it? Parka Parona Parona Parparana Parparana So they said the fluttering of the wings Then some scholars say Yes, the, it was continuous When the revelation came down You know the bell is continuous The sound of a bell, when you ring it, it's continuous Right? There's no, it's not broken So it was like that but because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have one direction, Allah is everywhere. Just the way when a bell rings, it doesn't come from one direction, it comes from all directions. So same way, when he heard the revelation, he compared it to the ringing of the bells. But only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what it was like. Only the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knows best. So in this, we learn two things. That the angel, one of the things was, the, the thing was that the angel came in a human form. And number two was the ringing of the bells. Now the angels, when it used to come in the angel, um, it says, speaking about when he used to, okay now, the angel when he used to come in the human form, sometimes he used to come in the form of a sahabi by the name of Dehya Qalbi. His name was Dehya Qalbi. Imam Bukhari narrates in his hadith from Dehya Qalbi radiallahu uh, anhu, it is said that the beauty of Dehya Qalbi was such. Today people are talking, you know, taking all these cosmetics to beautify themselves. <coughs> and you can't even tell a person. The Halloween is coming. Watch. You know? And there used to be time people used to have honor in beautifying themselves. Now the ugliest people. Now we have one day for ugly people. You know, they call it the Halloween subhanAllah. You know? Uh, let's not get into the details. You know, whatever. So, what it is, is... He was so beautiful that the Persians, Farsi log, was zamane me at the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Persians were known for their beauty. The Arabians were known as haywan. They don't know anything. They're animalistic people. The Persians were known for their beauty. So when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he sent Dehya Qalbi radiallahu ta'ala anhu to, with the message of Islam, when these people looked at the Hayya Qalbi, they were astonished. Because they had faqar, pride over the beauty. And when they looked at the Hayya Qalbi, they said, this person is not a human being, this is an angel. That's how beautiful. He used to, it is said about him in history books that the Hayya Qalbi used to cover his face. That's how beautiful he was. When he used to walk around with the answer, he used to cover his face. So the angel sometimes, Jibreel a.s. And it is a known fact, that Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam is to come with the revelation. There is no ikhtilaf in that. Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam is to come with revelation. So he used to come sometimes in the form of Dehya Qalbi rahmatullahi. Then only three instances where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam in his original form. One is after he received prophethood, he seen Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam. Number two, at the night of Mi'raj. He's seen um, Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam. And the third that he's seen uh, Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, I believe, is he asked Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam to show him his form. And he opened up in, in Sahih al Bukhari. It's a lengthy hadith. And, and the hadith speaks about how Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, how big his wings are. So in only three times did Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam see Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam in his original form. Now, speaking about, remember we spoke about when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi heard the ringing of the bells, it was the most hardest form of wahi. Why was this wahi? Because when the angel came in the form of a human being, it was nothing extraordinary. Right? But now, ringing of the bell, and that is a revelation, and that too from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. To perceive that, to understand that, we can't understand that, because it's the the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can we perceive it? And no human beings can understand this. 
That's why, because it was something extraordinary, that's what was Yada Boj Tana Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, speaking about Wahi, we only think that Quran came, it was in a beautiful form, Jibrayah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, the hukam came and that's it. We don't understand what Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went through. It says in a hadith, that's, وَلَقَدْ رَأَيْتُهُ وَلَقَدْ رَأَيْتُهُ يَنْزِلُ عَلَيْهِ الْوَحْيُ فِي الْيَوْمِ الشَّدِيدِ الْبَرَدِ He says, it was a cold, it was very cold. It says, شَدِيد الْبَرَدِ It was extremely cold. And I seen the revelation come on Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it says, فَيَفْسِمُ أَنْهُ وَإِنْ جَبِينَتُهُ لَيَتَفَصَّدُ أَنْهُ أَرَقَ He says, I'm looking at the Nabi, uh, she's saying, I see Nabi, this is Aisha radiallahu narrating this in Sahih al-Bukhari in uh, Kitab al-Iman. She says, that I'm Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ko dekh rihun. Or, shadid sardiyya. It's really cold and it's extremely cold. And what am I looking at? The revelation, he's sweating. Profusely. This is how, in another hadith, it is said that as Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates it, he says his face used to become pale when the, and he used to sweat like the, the drops of the sweat used to roll down like uh, beads. Tasbike jo beads hotena, that's how they're trickling down because of the hardship of the wahi, of this wahi. Imagine Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi what he went through just to, you know, for the revelation. Because, so to understand that this Quran is something majestic, this is something powerful. And it is said, Zayd uh, radiallahu ta'ala, he says, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa and you guys have heard this, that the, uh, uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa um, thigh was on my thigh, when the revelation came down, and it was so heavy that I thought to myself that this, the weight of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was going to crush my thigh. And that's how sakh this wahi was. So this is the first two kinds that the, uh, Number one was that we said that um, the first one was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angel used to come down and the, the ringing of the bells. Number two, we said that the angels used to come in the form of a human being and sometimes as a stranger, as in the hadith of Bukhari known as Hadith Jibra'il. It says, Umar ta'ala who says, Bainama nahnu julusan. Now look at this hadith. Jibra'il it says, while we were sitting, Meaning the Prophet used to sit with the Sahabas like this and they used to speak about deen. He says, بَيْنَمَا نَحْنُ جُلُوسًا إِنْدَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ ذَاتِ يَوْمٍ إِذَا تَلَعَ عَلَيْنَا رَجُولًا A person came. And he says, what kind of a person was he? شَدِيدُ بِيَادِ الثِّيَاب Imagine they're sitting in the Arabian desert. Now picture this. They're in the Arabian desert. A person comes, a stranger. And what do they see? His clothes, there's no dust on it. So they're like, what's going on? You can't say again. You know? There's no dust on it. Then it says, Shadidu Sawadu Sha'ar. So there is no dust on the clothes, there's no dust on the hair. The, all his hair is pure black. His clothes are extremely white, so he's sticking out. Then he says, La La Yura Alayhi Athar Safar. How there is no uh, what do you call it? There is, from looking at him, there's no traces of him being a traveler. Because it looks like he just took a shower and put on new clothes. And then he says, he comes, now this is, he says, Wala ya'rifu minna ahad. Nobody, kisi ne usko Nobody knew who this person was. So now they're even more amazed. So now they're all paying attention. Who is this person? He comes, what does he do? Rukbatayi. He takes his thigh and he puts it on the thigh of Nabi Sasa. Nobody knows him. Who is this guy? A stranger comes and he sits with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He puts his thigh against his thigh. Then what does he do? He takes his hands and he taps Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He puts it in his lap. So and now all the Sahabas are like, who is this guy? So now they're going to listen to the message that he has to say. And then he speaks about Iman. So this was Jibreel as Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, do you know who this person is? And other people are like, who is this person? He says, Jibreel as Nabi Wasallam. So Wahi, sometimes he came Jibreel came in the form of a stranger. Not always Dahiya Kalbi, but also a stranger. And then, so these are the two kinds of Wahi. Number three. Okay? So, 
just to wrap it up, the forms of we have. So, number three, Angel Jibreel wasalam, came in his original form, as we spoke about. Uh, and how do we know? At the time of ascension, when he went. Or, number four, dreams. Nabi Sallallahu dream is known about his dreams. That, that Hazrat Aisha radiallahu says that whatever Nabi Sallallahu saw in his dreams, exactly the same thing happened. And we know that the whole journey of Mi'raj was a dream. They say it was actually Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi actually went, but when he woke up from his dream. So the whole ascension, so his dreams, he sometimes the wahi came in his dreams. Then the fifth is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala spoke to him directly at the time of Mi'raj. Jibreel said, wassalam, with the whole lengthy hadith, what a beautiful hadith, it's like three pages. And he says that, you know, he met from the first level, he met this Anbiya. Second level, he met Ibrahim Salaam. Third, this, this, onwards. Then he says, Jibrai Salaam accompanied me all the way till Jibrai Salaam. He says, I cannot trespass this. Only you, Nabi of Allah, this is your honor that you can go beyond this. And then in the hadith, it says, Nabi Salaam says, there were about 100, 100 veils of light between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I communicated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he did not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So number five, he discoursed, he had a direct honor to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's how he got the wahi. And number six is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it in his heart for his commands. So we end this, inshallah here. So these are the six forms by which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got wahi, revelation. So we spoke about wahi, why we need wahi, then we spoke about the six things. So this ends the chapter of Wahi. Everything we need to, to know more or less about Wahi. Inshallah from next week we'll start speaking about the Quran. And why why the name Quran? Just to give you a little bit, you know. So he says in the Quran, how many how many names of Quran? We only know the name Quran. But some have written Quran has fifty names. Some have written Quran has ninety names. But the correct thing is, more or less, majority of the <coughs> scholars, they say, the names, they're not names, they're attributes. Like Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came down as attributes. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala speaks about five names of the Qur'an, in the Qur'an itself. So inshallah, we'll continue now. So may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make it easy for us and accept all our responsibilities.